Hello, and welcome to the 2024 Veterinary Academy student webinar. We're very excited to have you with us here today, as well as share some very important information about our veterinary programs. Before I get started, I do want to orient you to this webinar. If you are looking at the Q&A function and the controls, you can ask us questions throughout the webinar. We have people who are very familiar with the Veterinary Academy program that are standing by to answer any questions that you might have. We'll also make sure to leave some time at the end of this webinar in case there are any questions that you still might have or to answer any of those questions live for everyone. But before we get started with the actual presentation, we want to give you a chance to see what the veterinary program is all about. Please enjoy this brief video. So today um, I have the opportunity to do a physical exam on some of the livestock animals here. I looked at the donkey, a couple goats, and I even was able to look at a deer, which was really, really cool. The first step of a physical exam is to just do a distance exam where you step back and watch the animal. And then you do a head to toe examination where you look at the ears, the eyes, the nostrils. And then we also lifted the hooves for some of the animals if they let us. And then looked at the backside and just got to see all of these cool things in the physical exam. It's just an excellent program if you want to go into veterinary medicine. I've learned so much more here than I've learned in many of my classes at school, even the ones that are specifically focused on medicine. It's just a lot of information packed into a week and it was really, really interesting. So hooves, you always want to lift up and just take a look, all right? These actually look pretty good. He's in good shape. All right, next you're going to take your stethoscope and actually listen for gut sales, right? So listen to the heart and that's good. For high school students or even at the collegiate level, it's super important to have programs like this. The exposure that they get, they would not be able to get anywhere else. I mean, even if they were volunteering at a zoo, they would not get this behind the scenes experience. We're gonna just keep the door open with all this new technology. So as a veterinarian, you're always learning the medicine. I definitely want to be a vet when I grow up. I'm not sure what exactly I want to do in that field, but definitely veterinary medicine. So now let's give a brief history on World Strides. World Strides was started in 1967 to provide educational travel opportunities for students to gain firsthand experience and career exploration. Since that time, we have inspired over 800,000 students in 150 countries to see beyond the classroom, as well as learning more about themselves and the world around them. Our veterinary medicine program partners directly with Loop Abroad. Loop Abroad is the leading free veterinary travel program in the nation with thousands of alumni at university and vet school campuses across the United States. Their programs help students experience diverse veterinary careers firsthand. With an international team of expert wildlife and zoo veterinarians, Loop Abroad helps empower students to pursue the animal science careers of their dreams. With that, I will turn the mic to Jane Stein, who is the managing director of Loop Abroad. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm not able to turn my video on. I don't know if someone can give me permission to do that. I can just do it without video. I'll do that. 
And if at some point I get permission to turn it on, I will turn it on. Um, there we go. Hello. Very nice to have you all here. Um, thank you for that introduction. I am the managing director of Loop Abroad. I'm also the co-founder of Loop Abroad, uh, which I started with my partner 15 years ago. This will be our 15th summer of programming. So we're very excited to have all these wonderful World Strides programs that we can invite you to join. Most Loop Abroad students are college students. These are pretty uh, pretty exciting level of learning programs. And so to be, to be able to access those programs in high school or even middle school is a really amazing um, opportunity and leg up in the veterinary career. I'll just take a second here to talk about kind of how we focus on preparing students for a career in vet school or thinking if a career as a veterinarian or a path to vet school is right for them. Um, many of you may already know lots about vet school and the journey to vet school. We meet a lot of students who are very devoted to that path and they know from a young age that it's what they wanna do. But for those of you who don't, and I'm not a veterinarian, let me provide a little sort of overview. There's approximately 32 vet schools in the United States. I say approximately because there are new ones forming each year and then gaining accreditation in the first year they graduate a uh, graduating class. So there's 31 or 32, depending by which count you wanna use. Um, that's not a lot, right? That's not even one per state. And so admission is very, very, very competitive to vet school. It's more competitive than med school. It's more competitive than law school. And I say that as a lawyer who went through this process with law school, um, this is it. By the numbers, it's pretty much the most competitive um, uh, postgraduate schooling um, after bachelor schooling that exists in the United States. And so candidates coming into vet school are... It, if they're good candidates, they're prepared and they've been preparing for a long time. And I don't say that to scare anyone off, but I say that to sort of set the stage for what it means to kind of compete in that in that landscape. Um, getting into a good pre-veterinary undergraduate program can be a real key to enhancing your chance of admission to vet school. Um, vet school is one of the few, I won't say the only, but the only one that I know of and certainly one of the few places where on your application to, for example, law school, you wouldn't mention an activity you did in middle school or high school. Uh, on your vet school application, you will report your research hours, your veterinary hours, and your animal experience hours, and those go back to childhood. And so you would absolutely include the hours you would earn uh, on a program like this. And so we'll talk throughout this about research hours and veterinary hours, but for a short version, and these could they get updated each year by the AVMA, um, hours that you spend doing scientific research are research hours, whether they're with a veterinarian or not, whether they're with animals or not. If you're doing research, whether it's published or not, those are research hours. Then once you remove those hours that you spend working with a veterinarian are veterinary hours. And then animal hours that are left where you're working with animals, but you're not doing research and you're not working with a veterinarian are animal experience hours. And you want those research hours for a veterinary career or all, many other science sort of majors, which we'll talk about later. Uh, and you need those veterinary hours to be a competitive vet school applicant. And you need, depending on the school, 200 to 2,000 of them. And sometimes you may want to have way more than that. So uh, we're going to talk all about veterinary hours and how you earn them on these programs. Um, this slide introduces us to all the new programs this year. So we have a program for middle schoolers, seventh and eighth graders here in Washington, DC, which is where I'm based. Um, that's gonna be a really sort of exciting overview of veterinary careers, a lot of hands-on activities, labs, a lot of chance to learn from different vets, um, an understanding of what it is to be a veterinarian, what that path looks like, and sort of getting excited about different aspects of veterinary medicine, different careers in veterinary medicine, working with large animals, companion animals, exotics, wildlife, all those things. Uh, so we're excited to have that opportunity for middle schoolers who maybe aren't ready to uh, travel internationally with us yet, but want to kind of dip their toe in and have it be some real, real learning. I think the reason that Loop Abroad has stood out in the study abroad landscape in the veterinary space as really the true leader in that space and certainly the biggest program in that space is our commitment to making sure you know that time is used well and you're learning real hands-on stuff that you can apply and anything you're learning in a lecture or a workbook you're using right away and implementing and talking about and discussing and and working with in a way that helps you understand it and use it and process it and apply it to future uh future learning and future cases we have some other 
uh, new programs this year that are amazing. We've added a domestic zoo program at the Capron Park Zoo in Attleboro, Massachusetts. I'm from Foxborough, Massachusetts, which is right near Attleboro. Um, and so it's very exciting to be helping this local zoo uh, by bringing our students in. And it's a wonderful AZA accredited um, property with lots, a wonderful vet to learn from and lots to learn there. The Florida Reef Institute in West Palm Beach um, is doing amazing work with coral, which we don't always all think of as an animal, but which is an animal and needs veterinarians, and also doing some wonderful um, science research out in out in the water there. So lots of uh, research hours and and experience to earn there, and you get to be in Florida. Um, our Chiang Mai Thailand program. And when we get to Thailand, you'll learn about the real soft spot in my heart for Thailand. That's where our first program was. It's where our first high school veterinary program was. I fell in love with Thailand so hard that I moved there for seven years and my son was born there. Um, and I've, I've spent quite a lot of time at all the places you'll go there. So I'm very, very happy to answer questions about that one. I'm happy to answer questions about any of them, but um, I, can't, I can't keep my love for Thailand and the Thailand program a secret. Um, and we bring so many students to the Elephant Nature Park there every year and help to support their um, their mission and the wonderful conservation work they do. And it's a huge point of pride for us. Um, and our new dolphin research program, conservation research program in Costa Rica, which is participating in um, an ongoing 15-year scientific research project on a family, a wild family of dolphins. Um, and collecting amazing data on them and getting to see them in the wild. So lots of cool new programs, as well as all the programs we've run in past years, which we're going to talk about on the upcoming slides. And as you can see, I talk kind of a lot and I talk kind of fast. So if you miss anything or if you have questions, please feel free to um, chat them in. I can see the questions and I'm happy to address them as we go. I'm so excited about all these programs and I want to kind of give you an overall feel for them and what to expect and maybe which program to pick depending on your goals. Um, for real detailed questions about, you know, housing and meal plans and stuff like that, I'm going to encourage you um, to contact World Strides directly um, and to check the website too, because it's great to have that exact information for your exact program. But I want to give you a, a feel for each of these programs, who they might be for, and what you might expect. So here's our three um, domestic locations. This is in addition to the middle school program in Washington, D.C. Um, like I said, we've got Attleboro, Massachusetts, Victoria, Texas, and West Palm Beach, Florida. So I want to talk about Capron Park Zoo and Texas Zoo together, uh, because those programs are quite similar. But of course, Massachusetts is easier to get to for some folks. Texas is easier to get to for some folks. Texas is a little warmer in the summer. Uh, and we're using warm as a euphemism here. But uh, both places, of course, it's summertime. Um, these are zoo-based programs where you'll be with a vet and you'll have time each day. You can see here field classes, research and presenting, time in a lab, um, as well as times with the uh, animals on the property. So we never want to stress out um, wildlife, wildlife living at a zoo is still wildlife. Um, and so you will have opportunities to, you know, to create enrichments, to do research observation, um, occasionally to do feedings or things like that. You're not going to be holding and snuggling wildlife. It's not healthy for them. It's not healthy for you. Um, but you can see, as you can see here, there are, um, you know, some interesting interactions that are behind the scenes interactions that you would only get um, on a program like this. Uh, however, both programs have domesticated animals, livestock animals, as well as some small ambassador animals uh, that people can safely interact with. And we wanna maximize your chance to get that hands-on experience. We also build in hands-on experience through lab work, like suturing, microscopes, necropsies, all this work that you can learn so much from because you have a teaching veterinarian. So I think I want to take a second to talk about that model of the teaching veterinarian. There are a number of places in the world with veterinarians where you can go, usually you have to be over 18, but not always, uh, and maybe volunteer and observe the veterinarian. But the veterinarian's job is to take care of the animals. You're there to do something else. On these programs, that loop abroad veterinarian um, brought to you in this World Strides program is there to teach you. They are not providing, needing to provide medical care. They're not busy with surgeries. They're not on a schedule. They're there to teach their group of students. Um, and I think there's one veterinarian per like 
10 to 12 students. Uh, so you sometimes have shared veterinarians to work with and learn from, but you have a, de a dedicated veterinarian there to teach you the material, to make sure you understand it, to help you process it, to learn how to use it and to apply it in hands-on ways to everything you're doing. So the amount that you're able to do in a week like you saw in the video, we we so often have students, I'm talking about pre-vet college students who are in pre-veterinary programs who are volunteering each week who are doing all these things. We so often have students say, I learned, I did more in this two-week program, I learned more in this two-week program than in all these classes put together. Because of that concerted time where the veterinarian is paying attention to you, able to answer your questions, able to help you apply things, you can just move through material so quickly and see it being applied in real time. So you're going to see that at both these zoo programs. Um, the West Palm Beach program is similar in a lot of ways in terms of it's domestic. You have a veterinarian there. You're getting hands-on work. You're still doing research and all those things. Uh, but it's a little more research focused um, and giving you time to be out in the water and learning about uh, marine scientific research. And I think uh, folks who are maybe interested in being a veterinarian but aren't sure exactly What's the field? What's the career? I want to do something in science. I want to do something with animals. I'm passionate about conservation. I'm excited about this, but I'm not, I don't know exactly my path. This is such a great program because uh, conservation and marine research are going to be huge growing fields in the next 10, 20 years. There's a lot that needs to be done and a lot of really interesting work that is being done. Those scientific research hours are so valuable to earn as a high school student, they're valuable for when you're applying to college and you're showing, I have experience in you know, scientific terminology. I have experience collecting data. I have experience tracking that data. I have experience translating that into a conclusion. I have lab experience. I have field experience. I mean, all that terminology translates to a demonstrated interest in the scientific field, demonstrated training in the scientific field, and when you think about getting to campus and you're applying for labs, you're applying for research positions, you're applying for grants, you're trying to impress professors, you, you can say genuinely, I have this lab experience, I have this training, I know what these data terms mean, I know what these data collection um, you know, terminology is, I understand this world. You haven't done it for years and years and years, but in that one concerted week where you have someone teaching you all those things in the field, you can learn a lot. And you can get a big understanding of research. Those research hours are going to be valuable, of course, in applying to vet school, but in so many other things, too. So lots of good uh, domestic options here uh, in sort of different points of the country. Um, and even, you know, even putting two of those programs together and saying, I'm going to get the real concerted uh, veterinary program that has large animal exotics and wildlife at one of these zoos. And then I'm going to get the aquatics piece uh, and the research piece in Florida. So we have these groups, these categories of animals in veterinary medicine, where you're trying to, when you're applying to vet school, get uh, experience in as many of those categories as you can. And those categories are wildlife, which is what you think it is, exotics, which are basically pets that aren't dogs and cats, small animal, which is dogs and cats, large animal, which is... Um, horses and uh, cows, pigs, sheep, this kind of animals, uh, aquatics, stuff that lives in the water, and then research animals. So that's like rats and other animals you'd use in a lab. We do not have a research animal program, but we have programs with all those other animals. And so, for example, by combining a zoo and the Florida program, you would get aquatics, wildlife, large animal, and potentially some exotics as well, um, likely some exotics as well, working with birds because they count as exotics. So uh, really a wide uh, variety of experience there. I can't stop talking. I should talk less. All right, let's go to the next slide and see what else we have. We get to talk about Costa Rica. Okay, we have a number of uh, programs in Costa Rica. Costa Rica is one of those places that uh, everyone wants to go and for good reason. It's a beautiful place to spend time. Uh, this is the first place I lived abroad was in Costa Rica um, for my first law school summer and the Costa Rica part stuck and the law school part didn't stick so well, uh, but I did fall in love with it and we were so happy to open programs there in 2021 um, and to and to increase our program offerings with World Stride for this year uh, because they, they have been so popular. And I would encourage you, particularly for the Dolphin program, these programs have very limited space and when they're full, they're full. And quite a lot of our college programs in Costa Rica are full um, because people know they want to go there. They know they want to spend time with sloths like this guy um, or dolphins. And so if you're looking at a Costa Rica program, 
make sure you uh, you hop to it because they do fill up and we can't add additional space once they fill up. This is not programs with 100, 200, 300 kids where there's big lectures and you can add 20 seats. You have a small number of people who can live at this facility and be there with their teaching that. And it's limited by group. So once it's full, it's full and we can't add anyone else. Um, so particularly for the dolphin program, but for really all these programs, um, I would, I would, there's room, but I would um, act on the quicker side. Um, so we've got three options here. Um, I'll talk about them all kind of quickly. The dog sanctuary program is, it's very special. Um, dogs are considered companion animals or small animals, right? They're domesticated, they're pets. We all know what dogs are. Uh, but what's great about that is that you can get a ton of hands-on experience because dogs generally, or the ones you'll work with, aren't stressed out by being held. They want to be held. Um, and so the amount that you can learn, and we'll talk about the dog component of our Thailand program later too, but the amount you can learn when you have this small animal or large animal component in a wildlife program is so big. And in this program where you get to spend the majority of your time uh, working with dogs, with the veterinarian, like the student's learn so much. It's crazy. The amount of skills they come home with on their resume when they want to apply for internships, when they want to apply for jobs, when they want to apply for more shadowing hours, which you're going to need. They're really able to show an understanding of sort of the terminology and the basics and the safety rules, safe handling of, of you know, things like syringes and suturing and microscopes and all that stuff. So this dog sanctuary is called the Territorio de Zaguates or Land of the Strays. You've probably seen them on Instagram if you're on Instagram because they're hugely popular there and they were featured in the Netflix show, which I believe is just called Dogs. Um, and actually they were posting about this program on Instagram this week, which was really exciting. Um, they have like 1800 dogs. It's a lot, it's a lot of dogs. It's arguably too many dogs. Um, and they're what they're famous for is this walk that they take the dogs on every day, all the dogs on this jungle walk, and they kind of come over the hill like a waterfall. It's amazing. It's it's one of those experiences that just like is transformative. Um, but then you know, we have space to work there. Um, we have lab space, we have uh microscopes and and other um sort of health-related labs, and time with you and the vet and a dog to learn all these. Uh, ear assessments, eye assessments, heart assessments, um, blood blood panels and assessments, assessing health of uh, pregnant dogs or puppies, um, and and lots of time spent with your group, with the vet directly working with animals. And in all these programs, you get to see Costa Rica as well. We build in some fun days. We have you know experiences that aren't just work, work, work all the time and some culture. So you, you get to make the most of your trip there. Then I'm really going to talk mostly about the vet time today because we try to super pack that in. Um, Rescue Center Costa Rica is that I think where this sloth photo is from. Um, they this is a working wildlife rescue rehab and release facility. Um, because it's near the city, you're getting quite a number of animals who are uh, rescued from trafficking, so coming from the airport to this facility. Um, so they're they're an active working center. They're taking in patients. They're sometimes releasing patients. They also have patients who will live out their lives there. Um, often sloths get electrocuted and sometimes they cannot be rehabbed to release. Um, also occasionally getting hit by cars. Um, and but they do have uh babies often coming into the facility who can be who can be raised and released most of the time. Uh rescue center primarily has birds, primates, and then other small mammals that aren't primates. Um, and so there's lots of amazing animals there to work with, and you're getting to do quite cool um, physical exams and learning with your vet, as well as some upkeep of the center where we sort of take over the center and take over all those volunteer spots. It's lots of animals. They do need food prepared and all and enrichment and all those things. But those are part of, of any job and career in wildlife. And doing that with the veterinarian gives you that sort of uh, veterinary perspective inside on on nutrition, on enrichment, on on animal care. Uh, that I think really adds something. It's a wonderful place to spend time. I really love raccoons. So I really get excited about the fact that there's a raccoon there that comes and hangs out. No one else seems to be interested in that. But in case you are a raccoon lover like me, that's the one, that's the program you want. And then the dolphin program, like I said, which is, uh, which is one of those that you, you would want to sign up for very quickly if you're interested in a spot. This is the place to earn research hours. So this is a wild dolphin population. You're not touching them. It's not dolphins in captivity, but it's 
if you're looking later at scientific positions, there's something very impressive about understanding that difference and understanding how do we collect data and research on a wild animal population that we don't touch. What is the data we collect? You collect photos, you collect sound recordings, you collect blowhole capture, you collect all this data, you sort it. How do you process it? How do you track it? What do you do with it? What conclusions can you draw from it? What trends can we see over time uh, in the tracking of this family and population? And how do they compare to other trends like water temperature, uh, like weather events, like the populations of other animals that we see in the ocean. And we have some wonderful hands-on components in this program too. It's not all data, data, data. Um, one of the one of the bycatch is an unfortunate thing, but one of the great things about bycatch is that you can do necropsies. Uh, and so there's quite a lot to learn by doing that um, and quite a lot of practice you can get in a hands-on way uh, with your vet at a program like this. So again, this is a place where based on the dates, great to combo two of these programs if you wanna travel for two weeks. You want to spend a week with the dogs getting that real hands-on companion animal and then a week getting wildlife and exotics experience with a veterinarian or a week of wildlife and exotics and then a week of marine research where you get aquatics and you get that research component. In two weeks, you can have these 80 hours of experience and this wide variety of experience close up with a veterinarian or two veterinarians who are going to know you, know your work ethic, know your abilities, know how invested you are in this career. They are only gonna know you for two weeks and they're gonna know you in high school. So by the time you apply to vet school, they they may or may not be a recommender for you, but they can open those doors of, I stayed in touch with them, I followed their research, they recommended me for um, you know, a pre-veterinary program, they recommended me for a different internship, they let me help with a paper, like all these sort of doors that open in this veterinary world, which is quite small. Uh, especially the world of wildlife veterinarians. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how small that world of wildlife veterinarians is, how connected they are, how much everyone knows each other and everyone's research, particularly if you're focused on a certain animal, like you're a sloth vet, you're a pangolin vet, you're a macaw vet. It's a small world. I mean, we work with elephant vets and like you can count the number of elephant vets, not on one hand, but on all the fingers in, of the people in your house. There just aren't that many. And so when you start getting to know people in this world, it, 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 it really is beneficial to you as you enter that career, if you're interested in working abroad, if you're interested in wildlife, if you're interested in conservation. So all these programs having a, a sort of different angle in that space. Now they're regretting telling me to talk as long as I want about any of these programs. Let's go to the next one. Belize. Um, I'm going to start just by talking about Belize because I feel it feels like the the unnoticed gem here. Um, Belize is a Caribbean country. Um, it's next to uh, Guatemala. It's uh, on the Caribbean Sea. And Belize is just a beautiful place to spend time and an amazing time to place to learn and study abroad. Um, we have a full office with a full Belizean staff in Belize. Uh, I was just down there with my husband and my son for two weeks with a group of 32 faculty from different colleges across Maryland um, and didn't want to come home at the end because it's such a wonderful place to spend time and such a great country to study veterinary medicine and wildlife. Belize is over 50% rainforest still. And Belize has the second biggest barrier reef in the world after Australia. And so this is a place where we want to talk about wildlife and conservation of wildlife, they're doing it, they're doing it well. And, and for such a small country, and it's an incredibly small country, they've been very effective in their wildlife conservation, in part because of the Belize Zoo, which we'll talk about. So we have some program options here. Um, the wildlife program, which is based at the Tropical Education Center, which is connected to the Belize Zoo, and the horse and large animal medicine program. And I saw earlier, there was a question about equine. If you're interested in horses, if you're interested in large animal, this is the program for you. So Belize, a couple other fun facts about Belize, which again, everybody may already know, but you never know where we're all starting at. Belize is an English speaking country. Official currency is the American dollar. They do have a Belize dollar as well, but the US dollar is an official currency there. Um, it's a short flight from Florida or Texas. And, um, and you know, quite close to home. Uh, quite similar in, in climate to other Caribbean countries, but uh, sort of a world away culturally and a lot to experience in all the different cultures that are uh, a part of, of learning about Belize from Maya culture to Mestizo, Creole, um, even there's a huge Mennonite population there. 
um, and and all these cultural pieces that contribute to that Belizean um, fabric. So it's an amazing place to uh, to learn about languages, to learn about food, uh, to learn about art, and to learn about conservation. Conservation and culture are hugely connected, and this is a chance to see that in action and see how it plays out on both these programs. So the wildlife program at, based at the Tropical Education Center and Belize Zoo, you're going to get to see some amazing stuff at the Belize Zoo, and you're going to get to understand up close the conservation and wildlife in Belize from um, the work they're doing in conservation with howler monkeys and jaguars in the wild, tracking them, how you collect that data, how you understand them, how you protect those populations, the work with um, animals in uh, captivity in the Belize Zoo, and also the amazing conservation work done by the folks at the Belize Zoo, the woman who, start, who ran the Belize Zoo for quite a long time. I can't remember if she's the founder or not. Her name is Sharon. Um, there's a wonderful book about her called The Last Scarlet Macaw and all their amazing work on um, macaw conservation in Belize and beyond. She passed away uh, recently, um, but the, the sort of legacy lives on at the Belize Zoo and all the amazing work they do. So you get a real view of all kinds of different uh, conservation perspectives in that program. That is a great program if you are like, I want to work with animals. That's what I know. I'm like, I don't, I don't know that I want to be a vet. It's a great program if you want to be a vet too. It's great to have that conservation experience. But in particular, this program really shines if you're like, I don't want to walk, I want to be a vet, but I'm passionate about conservation. I'm passionate about animals. What can I do? What do I do? What career do I do that makes a difference? How, what are people doing? What's out there? Um, how, you know, how does culture and that understanding of people mix into conservation? Because you can't have conservation without working with people. Um, and, and what does that look like? I don't know what that was. Um, and so that's really an amazing program for that. Now the horse and large animal medicine program, I don't know, apparently everything I own is falling off a desk, sorry, um, is I will say the most hands-on program that we have. Uh, and I say that about our university programs and our vet student programs as well. This program is fabulously hands-on. Large animal is one of those weird words I don't understand in the veterinary world, but we're thinking about farm animals here. So in this program in particular, it's beef, cattle, dairy, cattle, pigs, sheep, and goats, and then horses as well. You're going to be out on farms with your Belizean veterinarian teaching you every day. And with large animals, you can be much more hands-on and you can do quite a lot more than you can with wildlife, certainly, and also than you can with even domesticated animals like um like cats and dogs. And so, I mean, you're really going to be out there and the amount of stuff you can do and the amount you can learn with Eduardo is unreal. He's a fabulous veterinarian. He was the head of the um, Belizean agriculture ministry for many, many years, ministry for many, many years. He knows every farmer and every farm in Belize. Um, we, he runs a, a dog and cat clinic, which offers free um, spay and neuter clinics once a month. So the amount of stuff you get to see and do, um, you can get a detailed a detailed program schedule on the website, but it's, it's fabulously hands-on and really great for anyone interested in any veterinary field. You're going to want going into uh, vet school, some experience with large animal. It's great if you have some equine experience as well. Um, if you know you're interested in equine, this is the program for you, for sure. Um, if you are looking at a pre-veterinary program and you're wanting to come in with a little, a little bit of experience in large animal or equine, just to sort of round out companion animal experience you already have, this would be a great program. Totally fine for total beginners. So don't feel like you're like, oh, she's saying all these things. I don't have any of that experience. All these programs are fine as long as you're comfortable around animals and you're ready to learn. Uh, you have the skills you need for any of these uh, any of these programs. Excuse me. And can we talk about Thailand? All right, I'm not gonna have a favorite. I do have a favorite, it's Thailand. Um, <laughs> I really think every program we have is fabulous, but this this is our this is our baby. Um, this this two week program in Thailand is the first veterinary program we created back in a bajillion years ago, 2012 or something. Um, and we started with six high school students when we first had this program. And it continually every year is 
just a favorite. I mean, the reviews are off the charts. The experiences are off the charts. The photos are mesmerizing. I don't know anyone who's gone to Thailand and not had a great time. Um, it's This program is based in Chiang Mai, um, which is in the north of Thailand. It's the second biggest city in Thailand, but it's not a skyscraper city, big city like Bangkok. It's big because it's spread out and a lot of people live there. But it has a, a, a what they call the old city in the center, a walled city with a moat around it. And it's kind of spread low from there. So Chiang Mai is the city, man, is the place to be traveling. There's monks and temples and food markets and amazing street markets and amazing food and coffee that's grown there. And I could talk about Thailand all day, but it's one of those places um, just to have the travel experience of a lifetime and to be able to try things that you wouldn't try at home or can't try anywhere else and to get cultural experiences that are safe. I mean, you're with a staff, you have uh, a, a, a trip leader with you all the time. You have a veteran devoted to your group. You have a Thai tour guide for your group. Um, Chiang Mai is very safe anyway, but you have, you know, somebody with you all the time. Sometimes people are worried. The first time I went to Thailand, I went by myself and I was like, but I don't speak Thai. No one's going to, I'm going to be lost. No one's going to understand me. Everybody in Chiang Mai speaks English. Um, they don't all speak perfect English or tons of English, but most of them do. And everyone does. So uh, although you have a Thai tour guide with you who speaks Thai and English, and a lot of our staff speak both Thai and English extremely well, um, I don't speak Thai. And I lived in Thailand in Chiang Mai for seven years. And I should be embarrassed of that. But I have a company and a baby and it, I didn't learn it. I speak a little bit of Thai. Uh, but you don't, it's not a skill that you need and you won't have any trouble communicating or feeling safe with people or connecting with people. So this program basically roughly splits your two weeks, one week living at the Elephant Nature Park, which is the elephant sanctuary, and one week living in Chiang Mai and spending the day at the dog rescue center, um, a clinic, sorry, dog rescue clinic. Dog rescue clinic is owned and run by Loop Abroad. This is a place we can bring in dogs that are rabies vaccinated, that are, you know, healthy, that you can learn from, learn with the vet, spend time with. And there's an amazing lab space there. So uh, microscope work, um, working on different models to get and learn experience, building up to the last two days of that week, observing and shadowing uh, spay and neuter surgeries, which we're very happy that these programs could provide for the community for free. Um, and then you have sort of a fun weekend where we do a lot of our favorite uh, Chiang Mai activities. And then, um, and you have those in the evening as well after the dog week, and then your week at the elephant sanctuary. And it's one of those places that you just never forget spending your time there. There's about maybe 80 elephants who live there full time. These elephants are not giving rides. They're not putting on shows. They're just being elephants. They're rescued. They have a forever home and they live there forever. And you get to spend a couple times shadowing the vet. You get to do a full day research product, which is a diet study following the elephant you're assigned to and learn all about them. Um, and then you get to spend some time with your veterinarian, also learning about the other animals that live there, which are like 2000 cats. And I'm gonna estimate maybe 700 dogs and not quite a number of other, um, quite another, it's too much shocking, quite a number of other animals as well, including some uh, livestock, water buffalo, pigs, um, basically whoever needed rescuing at the time. So it's a it's a very cool program. It's a, it's a bit longer and of course a bit further away. We don't want to have you flying to Thailand for just eight days. Um, it goes by quick and it's perfect for first time travelers. And it's still perfect for people who've traveled uh, quite a lot and have a lot of travel experience. You will have a lot to learn. Uh, you'll have a lot to do. You'll be busy, busy, busy all day. Probably the biggest complaint, if you can call it a complaint we get is it was too busy. We did too much stuff, but we don't, we want to wring every second out of, um, out of your time there. And I think that I could talk about Thailand forever, but we'll go to the next slide. And I'm, I can't remember if I'm supposed to talk about the Thailand family program or not. So I'll stop talking for a minute. We'll have you talk about the Thailand one and I'll come in for Costa Rica. Okay, great. Um, so for the family program, we've organized uh, a great way to spend your time in Thailand. If you are a parent who's wanting to come join your child coming to Thailand, but not join them every single day. Um, and so you get a chance to see where they are, travel with them, visit the Elephant Nature Park, but not spend a whole week there, and then do some of our absolute favorite things in Thailand. Now, you can go to Thailand and book 
a cooking class or zip lining and you'll have a good time. Um, these things, this is all planned for you, all figured out for you. And these are our favorite places. The tour guides we love that we've worked with for 10, sometimes 15 years. We have a full Thai company and a full-time Thai staff uh, based in Chiang Mai. And so we have really wonderful connections there and wonderful people there. And these are the, the places and projects that we choose to uh, send our students and to spend our time. Uh, we know you'll have a great time experiencing them. You'll get to see the elephants. You'll get to visit the Buddhist temples. You'll get to do the Thai cooking class and learn how to make all the delicious foods. There's a food, we do a lot of food uh, in Thailand because it's just one of those, things that you can't miss when you're in Thailand. Um, the Changdao Caves is a, a, an amazing place to spend a day. Um, and then this program also includes a trip down south to uh, Phuket. I believe the program includes that domestic airfare within Thailand. Um, and so we'll go, we'll be able to spend some time uh, on the beaches there. And if you if you just do a quick Google image search, you'll see that they really are some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. So it's a wonderful, relaxing busy, but low key, um, sort of family friendly way to spend your time in Thailand. And then you'll have, you know, free time in the evenings to be able to explore the city, which is a beautiful place to walk around. Chiang Mai is a city that has all the modern amenities that you might want. It has the brands that you're sort of familiar with. It has 11 McDonald's, for example, it has Starbucks, it has grocery stores that have the products you have at home and everything, but pretty much it has great internet. It has great roads. It has great hospitals. Like I said, my son was born there. So lots of uh, time spent in those. Um, it has all those things that make it feel like home and feel comfortable and safe and everything. But, um, but it still has that sort of same charm that it had thousands of years ago and and these sort of ancient temples and just amazing relics and this and this culture that um that sort of permeates everything and so you really get the best of both worlds in that way being based in Chiang Mai I can't recommend enough spending spending time there now I'll turn off my mic and let let you all talk about Costa Rica and the rest of these slides nice talking to everybody thank you so much Jane so I will pick up with Costa Rica you can experience the art, food, and the local culture of San Jose, Costa Rica. You'll visit the Rescate Wildlife Rescue Center, which Jane spoke about earlier. You'll also explore Tortuga Island, including snorkeling. There'll be a day trip to La Paz Waterfall Gardens. And then also a visit to Manuel Antonio National Park, which is the home of sloths, monkeys, anteaters, and 180 species of birds. So lots of great wildlife for you to see. And if you'd like more information about the family programs, you can go directly on our website or you can enroll in the program as a scholar and be able to add that on as well. So before we wrap up, we do want to talk again about what your program fee includes. So when you enroll in the program, your fee includes exclusive access to our teaching veterinarians, and the zookeepers and rescue staff, as well as our um, other worldwide staff that will be there to ensure the safety and supervision of the scholars. For any of our programs outside of the United States, there is an international group flight that's available from a designated departure location, and the Thailand flight is optional. It also includes your meals and any cultural activities and up to 60 vet hours or 40 research hours, depending on which location and which program that you choose. So at this time, we will go ahead and wrap up the webinar. We appreciate your uh, attendance here, as well as listening and hearing more about the program. If you do have any other questions about the Veterinary Academy, you can reach out directly to our Office of Admissions. That phone number is on your screen and it is 1-844-794-4426. So now we'll turn our attention to any of those questions that have been asked during the presentation to make sure that we answer it live for everyone. And if you have any other questions, feel free to go ahead and put them in the Q&A at this time. Okay, I see there are a couple of questions here about the flights. So for um, the flights being included in the tuition price, the Costa Rica program and Belize program, the flights are included in the tuition. 
if you want to take a group flight to Thailand, you can join, but that is an optional fee. So Costa Rica and Belize are available in the tuition. And for the Thailand excursion, that, that group flight will be available at a nominal fee additionally. Jane, if you're still here with us, I see there are a lot of questions coming in about the middle school program. Are you able to share anything with us about what that program entails? I am still here. Yeah, I was just trying to bring up the schedule on my computer, which of course isn't working, but I can give you sort of a general idea. Um, this is a university-based kind of seminar-based program. So in each day, we have a focus on a sort of different, I would say, type of animal, like um, working with small animals, working with large animals, working with exotics or wildlife. And that's a combo of lectures, labs, guest speakers and hands-on experience that you'll have on that campus. Not a ton of live animal hands-on, but we will get some animals onto campus so that you can spend time with them. Um, companion animals and a few other a few other pals will come join us so you can get some physical exams and some of that hands-on experience working with your vet. But there's quite a lot that you can learn in a very hands-on way um, in constructed labs. So we have, for example, um, models that we use for uh, learning how to give um, IV injections, learning how to insert catheters. That's great practice to have even at the middle school level, just to sort of understand the science of that. Um, working with microscopes, learning to make um, blood smears, learning to make other slides um, and in giving sort of basic diagnostics and exams and, and, and really sort of understanding even some of the terminology of like the directional terminology of how do you explain where something is on an animal? How do you listen to a heart rate? How do you describe it? Um, what is that sort of terminology like? And what are those different veterinary careers like? Uh, and then we're going to spend a few days at the um, the National Zoo, the Smithsonian Zoo, um, getting to work with your vet on uh, learning to understand some uh, research that's done, how animals are cared for in the zoo, um, how you can track information through things like ethograms, which are uh, how you collect data on wildlife by watching them and track that data, how you design enrichments, um, and all these pieces that are used in care for wildlife. And we'll have some guest speakers from that exotics and wildlife world talking about what those careers look like, what they look like around the world, and how different veterinarians work with animals. So you'll have the chance to be exposed to our goal in that program is really, okay, I'm in middle school, I want to be a vet. What is that? What does it look like? We, most of us, I won't, I won't speak for most of us. I'll speak for me. Um, when I think of a vet, I think of the vet that sees my dog, right? And I do this all day and I still, that's what first comes to mind. The vet that treats your dog and cat that you grew up with. There are so many other veterinary careers. There are large animal veterinary careers. A huge number of veterinarians in the United States work with large animals. They work with food animals. Every animal that you eat as food is seen by a veterinarian. They work in the military taking care of working animals. They work uh, in research labs taking care of research animals. They work taking care of aquatics. They work at zoos. They work in conservation all around the world. And so understanding sort of what those different careers are, what they're called, what those tracks look like, what different veterinary careers are combined with the sort of fun, exciting, hands-on pieces of getting to apply what you're learning um, every day, getting to learn some terminology, getting to learn, you know, surgical terminology and how to, anything from like how to do sterile gloving or how to do a sterile scrub into how to do suturing that get you excited about veterinary medicine. They get you understanding every piece of that from what's the terminology, what are the safety protocols, all those things prepare you more to Yes, to ask for a shadowing position with a vet. Yes, to to enter a pre-veterinary class, but more to sort of understand what parts of this career am I excited about? What am I interested about? What questions do I want to ask the vet? What does this path look like? How do I have to sort of devote myself to, to my science studies at this point? Because you you really need to be on a on a academic quest on the science side from the jump in high school. Um, not that we can all come back from one or two high school grades that aren't wonderful. Uh, but, but, you know, it's, it's a, it's a science field and it needs, um, and it needs a commitment, uh, to be, to be a successful applicant to vet school. So we try to sort of expose you to all, all those pieces as much as we can in one week, uh, and get you with some interesting guest speakers and vets who can 
answer those questions with vet students who you can talk to about their experience and just and just kind of an intro to uh, different careers in, in veterinary medicine. Thank you so much, Jane. Another long-winded answer for me. No, it was very informative answer. As I said, we had quite a bit of people asking about this middle school program. So I think that you have satisfied their and, curiosity. And you get to come to my city. I can, I mean, after all that wonderful time in Thailand, this is where I picked to come. There's so much cool stuff to see here and do nation's capital, et cetera, et cetera. But it's very pretty and, it's, and it and, a, and has a lot to see and a lot of interesting stuff going on. So you get that DC piece as well, which is, um, which is great. And we'd be happy to see any of you here when you get here. So I see that our question answers have come in a little bit slower. So we'll give one more moment. And if there's any other questions that you have, please ask this while we have an expert in the field here as well as some of our chat moderators. I'm sure if you have that question, others have it as well. We want you to walk away feeling very informed. So if there are any other questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat. And while that is happening, we have seen a lot of questions asking about certain sessions and if they're full. So as Jane explained earlier, these are smaller class sizes because we want to have that hands-on experience and the one-on-one -on -one type of teaching for you. So especially for our international programs, but even for the domestic ones, if there's a program that you are interested in signing up in, we highly encourage you to sign up and enroll as soon as possible, just so your seat can be reserved for you. I thought for sure someone would ask me about food in Thailand and I would get to tell you about all kinds of delicious things. Maybe I just have dinner on the mind. You can still <laughs> ask. I'll talk about Thailand. I talk about all these places, but I will, I, will I, I could just talk about Thailand. We could just do another webinar where we just talk about what to eat in Chiang Mai anytime anybody wants. Well, it seems like most of the questions have stopped. Jane, I do want to give you the opportunity if there's any closing words that you would like to tell to the attendees or hopeful future attendees of the program. Ooh, have we not learned to not tell me to talk? <laughs> um, <laughs> listen, I we've been doing this a long time and we and we're very proud of this programming because veterinary career, like I said, is these kids want it. I shouldn't say kids, because by the time you apply to vet school, you're an adult. And the 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 work that they put in and what they do is amazing. I think it's important for us to remember there are lots of careers, veterinarian and otherwise, that work with animals, that contribute to the health and safety of animals, that contribute to the health and the safety of the planet uh, and conservation, particularly with wildlife, that are hugely valuable, that are very can be very successful careers, and that are all good options. And I think these programs help students to just understand, take that sort of, whether it's the first step or the 20th step for them to understand what is a veterinarian? What, it, you know, I, I, I'm I not a veterinarian, but I went through this with law school. I was like, I'm gonna go to law school. And I didn't know what I was doing. I, I, I didn't have, I don't have parents who are lawyers. I don't have, I didn't have family friends who are lawyers. I didn't know what I knew from like law and order what that was. And I just like jumped into it and it turns out it wasn't for me. Um, so just having any time you can spend in a career before you commit to that career and like start to understand what is it? What are the jobs? What's the terminology? What is the timeline? Who are the other people doing this? What are the other kids like me who are interested in this doing? What are they interested in? What groups are they following on social media? Who do they look up to what who what kind of research can I be doing what does this vet do what did they think about vet school what is vet school how long is it where do I go any of that that you get lets you build on that over the years and anytime you're entering a profession particularly if you don't know other adults in that profession personally that's a, that's like a huge view into the world a huge leg up a huge leg up and you you're looking at this program that's seven years of eight years of study which is great but the more you can sort of set that path early get those connections build those vet hours understand oh you know what i don't really like working with wildlife i love working with companion animal turns out i loved the equine stuff i was not at all interested in food animal 
um, I, whatever that looks like, you 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 get to cut out huge swaths of time later wasted and, and hone that focus early uh, or not hone it yet, but just be exposed to it and kind of think about it in new ways. And I think um, in any profession that that initial exposure can't be overstated and that any of these programs would be applicable for someone who's kind of new to this, get ready for vet school world. But we also have lots of students who are like, I've worked in a clinic already for three years and I have a horse and I work at the local farm and they're ready with a sort of different layer of questions. And now they're in a small group together and they can all learn from each other. And we talk all of us a lot about diversity, but for us, that diversity of experience, diversity of opinions on, you know, things like food, animal, euthanasia, all this stuff, this, this different backgrounds coming together and learning together about, um, What's your experience in this vet med world? What did you, ha what happened at your clinic? What happened at your clinic? What does this vet say? What does that vet say? The amount of interaction you get in that small group in that short time combined with that hands-on experience. We've seen it. We've seen it, the course it sets for people. And now that we've been doing this long enough, I'm starting to have my high school students come back as teaching veterinarians because they've gotten through college. They've gotten through vet school. They started their practice and they're like, I, this was the thing. It changed my life. I got to come back. And I'm like, yeah you do come back, you're hired, come teach what you learned and show what that path was like for you. And so we know, we see those graduates come out every year and we hear from them, you know, this, this two weeks I spent at 15 changed this whole path for me. I mean, uh, we have one teaching veterinarian who's, who is joining us again this summer, who came with us as a semester student to Thailand and college. And, and and she works professionally with two or three of the faculty she met during that program. And she just contacts us all the time and says, once again, here I am with, you know, working, doing some, she was in Alaska doing free spay neuter clinics. And then she was in Hawaii doing some amazing thing. And she's like, it just all stemmed from this professional experience. She's an extraordinary student as well. But um, that wasn't closing words. That was like 95 paragraphs. I just get excited about the opportunities that are available. And I want to encourage you if you if you feel a passion for a profession to start learning more about it. If that means you join us, we would love you to join us. But if nothing else, start learning more about it and gaining that sort of terminology and connecting with people in the field because it's so exciting. Uh, and it gives you it gives you just a huge, huge uh, leg up later that that whether you need or don't need is is a wonderful asset. Um, and you can't ever go back and and start that path again. So if you have the opportunity to get it early, lucky you and 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 try to get it. And we hope that it um, that it gives you everything that you want from it. Thank you so much, Jane. Your passion for veterinary medicine and especially for your programs definitely shines through. And we really hope that. Everyone here on this webinar is interested in signing up because we would love to have you this summer. If there are other questions that we weren't able to get to, or you just think of them later, please feel free to reach out to our Office of Admissions at 1-844-794-4426. Thank you again for being available to attend this webinar. It is being recorded and we will share it roughly one week from today. Reach out to our Office of Admissions if you have any other questions. But if not, we really hope to see you at a future Veterinary Academy program very soon. Thank you again.